said Quimian isn't in this week, but uh, Max has been in. He's been brilliant every time he's been brought in. But yeah, myself, Mark and Quimian, you know, we've been with each other quite a while now and uh, we're always pushing each other to be better. And, you know, between us and Dean, you know, we make really good sessions. Last year we said Hampton was a bit up and down and there was a bit of issues there with some of the fans and different things this season. Has the past few weeks been a good positive run for you and do you still feel like you're definitely Ireland's number one? There's, uh, there's been a lot of changes at Southampton, yeah, and the, the last week of games has been you know, a, lot, a lot more solid than uh, the, the couple of weeks before, and it looks like we're starting to gel together as a team, but like I said, I've said for a long time, you know, every, every time I'm stepping on the pitch, I'm fighting for my place, whether that's at my club or my country, never sitting anywhere secured of any position, I know every day I'm fighting for my place. Do you feel like a more senior international? Uh, I think... I think it's been mentioned with the group. You know, we've uh, we've had a lot of senior players who aren't in this squad, and it's it's time now for a lot of the the younger lads. You know, we call them young lads, but a lot of us have a lot of experience playing uh, at international and club level. And you know, it's time for us to to step up and take that role. And listen, you're 20, 28 was announced this morning as part of the Republic of Ireland as co-hosts. You can look forward to that possibly, hopefully. Um, is it great for the country and the game here? Yeah, it's massive. You know, it's a it's a very exciting moment for us as as players and for the fans as well and you know it um it just gives us great motivation to to be there you know that's that's what we want to do we want to be playing at major tournaments you know for a lot of the squad who who haven't been there we've we've had uh, words of wisdom from from older lads as what it's what it's like to to be in that position and for me as a as a young kid looking on as a fan knowing what it can do to a country to to bring us to a major tournaments yeah, but yeah, so just following on from that um the disappointment of this current campaign can be put aside for today anyway with, with, the, with the great news of the, of the Euros coming to Dublin. And so just someone like yourself, we have spoke to Evan earlier, it's making of a, of a great team coming through. Do you think it, it could be really certain to hit, hit the, uh, the peak around the sort of 2028 era? Yeah, I think we've we've got a we've got a great squad, and like I said, you know, we we've been called young players with a lot of potential. But I think it's uh, it's now time for for us to step up as a group, and you know, really show how good we are as players, and um, you know, to build this really good culture within the squad, uh, within the team, and start putting in really high class performances and get results. Just a quick one on the actual, um, I suppose, the campaign just gone and the management. Um, Matt was in earlier. He was saying there was. That the team are put out the way, the right way, and trained the right, the right way in the training ground and stuff. It doesn't, there doesn't appear to be any dissenting voices within the dressing room uh, regarding the manager's tactics. It's, it, is everyone all on the same on the same sheet in that sense? Everyone's full support. Him? Yeah, definitely. I think there's there's never been a sense of anyone working off their own hymn sheet. Um, we've all always been together as a team. We've always had a really strong group, and you know, every player on the pitch, every player on the bench, every player in the squad has all been always working in the same direction. Just a quick one in relation to the quick one you're hoping to get back to Tala before the end of the season to see something historical perhaps? Yeah, yeah, hopefully something special happens. Hey, just, um, just to bring back to the last month, there was a talk about the team game, but as goalkeeper, a lot of focus is on you. There was the, the Sunderland, the five nil, the two internationals, and then Leicester. A lot of focus on you, because the goals are going. How, how, how do you find the mental strength? to cope with that, with the pressure from the fans, from everything else, how, how do you deal with that? It's part of the game, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 21 years old but I've been around the game for a long time, uh, I think for me it's I, I listen to the people who are going to allow me to be better and you know, as a goalkeeper especially, you, the scrutiny is so heavy at the at the top level and um, for me I just listen to the people I know who are going to make me better. And just again, last season when you did lose your place, you know, 5 million. What's the conversation with the manager? Does he assure you? Do, do you have that conversation? Is he still back to you? Number one, it's the famous footage of the, the meeting with fans where he said you're, you're still as number one. But does that cover? How, how does he back you in that way after after a five nil that, that you, you can take something from that to, to keep going? Um, I mean, from from me, it's I'm I'm looking at myself all the time, and I think with the manager we have, he's he's brilliant. He's um, not just a great you know man manager, but he's also brilliant in terms of his. His tactics and how he goes about the game, and I think the way he speaks with the players is is brilliant. He talks to you on a level; he doesn't talk down to you or anything like that. So, I think um, he's he's been brilliant for me to to keep my confidence up and to to go into every game with full belief. Thanks, thank you.
in the top of it was saying the leaf and even as Evan was chatting about there beforehand about like, blocking out stuff that you can't control and maybe that's something that a younger generation of footballers have had to realise because of say social media and maybe the amount of media. So how do you do that then? Do you, would you have a total blackout of stuff on say social media or even not watch certain programmes because they might be discussing your own performance? Uh, it can be difficult because the reach that social media has these days, you know, it's, sometimes it's impossible to, to stay away from it. And I think you, you don't want to, like you say, have a complete blackout because you never learn to to really take it on and almost be able to block it out. Um, but you have you have people around you and, you know, I think young players now, you have to you have to work not just on your, your technique and your tactics, it's the mental side of the game that's a massive part, you know, of players performing consistently at a high level. So, you know, I think... Uh, every player, young player you see out here performing at high levels has different, you know, mental tactics and mental fortitude to, to work against blocking those things out. In that instance then, because obviously the nature of football players are going like, from different clubs and stuff, but would you speak to your own psychologist then or something like that where the person you would trust over the last number of years to, to do that or like, like that, also realising you're, yeah, you're a footballer but it's only one part of your life, you have to be able to live your life and enjoy things day to day and not have to block everything. Yeah, exactly. Finding that balance is a massive part of it because at the end of the day, we're, we're footballers, but we're all human beings. You know, you know, you have to be able to live your life outside of football. Um, and like you said, like yeah, I do have someone that I work with both in and outside of the club, and you know, and a lot of people that I trust around me in my in my circle that I listen to a lot, and they're the ones that keep me strong. And in terms of saying a lot of stuff out, like going out in Southampton, it's a huge club, and obviously being in the Premier League and the fan base that it has, has that been difficult at all, or? Like no, I've not really had much much of a problem with that at all. Mark, can just just in terms of I suppose building uh, resilience and so on, how, how big a role has uh, making your debut at such a young age as Sharon Ball was played and has there been other things in your life that has you know helped you build this uh, Yeah, that's that's a massive thing, you know, being in, in first team football since since the age of sixteen as um led me to a lot of exposure, you know, being at that professional level for, for five years now, I've got a lot of experience as to, like mentioning, blocking out things and being resilient and, you know, I don't feel like I'd be anywhere near the level I am now without that mental strength. Um, Gavin, you've got a couple of Southampton teammates in this squad, just um, Brian Manning and, and, and Will Smallbone, uh, that's a, a gathering among at the moment. Um, just your, your thoughts on them, what they contribute. I mean, Will played in Greece and he came off, I think, early in the second half. Not really spoken about that. Um, he's obviously back in again now. Ryan's been waiting to get in and he's been in around the squad for a little while. What sort of qualities did they have and how important is having a, sort of a camaraderie of club players playing at international level? Uh, I think, uh, to me, it doesn't make much of a difference because I've got such a good rapport and relationship with all the lads in the squad. You know, a lot of the lads have been in here for a long time and played with them a lot from from youth ages from 21s and uh the others for two three years up in in the senior squad and having that relationship with everyone you know everyone comes in and they're excited to see each other and from from the very first training session you feel today like everyone's on the same level and you mentioned will and ryan you know i see their qualities every week in training and they're they're top players who definitely have uh the qualities to come in and play for us how far do you think you can go with Ireland? I mean, you've, you've come an awful long way very quickly. You're still only 21. I have to find a pinch myself to realise how young you are. But I gave him was quite young as well. Actually, was 21 when he got his first cap. Can you see yourself going down that road and becoming, you know, a, a legend in terms of goalkeeping as they were? That, is that a goal? That's definitely my goal. You know, that's I think um, that was my goal ever since I was a kid. But you know, when you get to this level, you can't start thinking like that. You've got to take everything one week at a time, one session at a time. Are you getting better? I try to every day. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.